Summer Blood Tour. So uh, you guys starting right, what, first couple of dates. What? How do you guys come about with the uh, tour titles? Your set costume design, your set design. How does that change when it comes to summer or summer on your tours? Well, this tour came as a whim, really, because we were writing and we were kind of just uh, just stuck in that whole mindset of writing. And we've been off the. We finished in Japan in December, and last year was a massive touring year for us. So, uh, you know, we've been just writing and recording and writing and trying to figure out the direction of where we wanted to go. And then we just said, do we want to sit all summer long doing this or just go out? So we just said, so we created the Summer of Blood. And uh, uh, it's just one of those things, you know, yeah, uh, tours need a tagline to sell, but at the same time, we, you know, we have been doing the Appointment with Death tour for so long, and we, we needed a break to go off into something else, and it seemed like the perfect opportunity. And now it's spun off into the winter of blood in Europe, so we still will start that in October and go all the way through December, I think, in Europe. So very cool. It's uh, <laughs> the whims turn into to something, you know. I, I, so you can never turn your back on those things. Exactly. You know? And how does that kind of change your family and social life? Because you almost have to live both lives. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm not married, so it's a little easier oh, yeah. for me. <laughs> but uh, the rest of the guys, uh, that's actually the benefit. I'm going on the road. <laughs> so it kind of works in everybody's favor. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, we're always looking, you know, if when, sometimes we get called to do these tours and we do them. Uh, but because we're always, we love touring, this is what this band is. It's, it's about performing and it's about. Uh, Moving an inch, you know, and because we know this this lineup and what we're doing now is better than what we did in the '80s, so we're like we aim to prove it, you know. And you got you kind of have all those same sensibilities you had when we first started this band, and uh, so because it's we believe in it so much, we just kind of want to prove it every night. And we're having a blast too, and you know. It's not just about the costumes or anything. It's you know we could go up there in jeans and still no have exactly. That same. The music's what yeah. really sells it. When you guys go overseas, you're playing in front of 40,000, 50,000 people. When you come to the states, it's almost like you get some great venues and you get turnouts where it's like people. How do you does that change how you prepare yourself going to a show? Not me. I mean, we have the same. I have the same preparation. Uh, you know, we, we've had guys in the band who say, "Oh, there's not that many people, so I'm not going to do this." And I'm like, "No, you're going to do everything you do if you play in front of 72,000 people or or 12 people." Exactly. You know, and because some of these people drive from different no, exactly. states, you know, five, six hours, and sometimes they fly in. And so. They're probably stalking you. Really <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> So I, you know, you can't go out there and half-ass them. These people, you know, exactly. did, even it's not their fault. There's not a good turnout. You know, promoters don't really promote anymore because if they think I have Facebook and I don't have to, you know. But uh, it's not like it used to be. And with promotion, now that the internet's it's the, it's the benefit, but it's actually you got to get out there and, and still pass out the flyers. Look, I remember seeing you guys play back in the day. You came into the record store, you did an in-store appearance and all your regalia, and then later that night did the show, you did radio, you did the whole damn thing. It, oh, yeah. It, we're missing all that these days. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a machine that has to keep going, and you know, it's starting to happen again in this, in this country. I think it's all about the youth, and that's what really inspires the older guys who are people who, who love the music just kind of, you know, there's not a concert every weekend like it used to be. <laughs> So it's hard to go, oh, maybe I'll make that show, oh, maybe not, you know. But, and then you see all these other the kids going, yeah, I'm going. And it's like, yeah, I want to go. So they end up going back. And that's the way it is in Europe. I mean, it's a mix and match. You, we play to 14 year olds and we play to 40 year olds. You know, it's such a huge gap. And they're right in the mix, you know. And, and everybody's having a blast. So it's starting to happen in this country, especially with all ages shows. There's not many all ages shows because it's still trying to sell the. Sell the beer mentality, you know, and it's, uh, but the all ages shows gets the younger crowd in there and interested in the music. So. Very cool. What is, or one of, or some of the craziest stunts you've pulled on, pulled off on stage? <laughs> uh, what do you mean, as far as props and Just stuff? Just props, like some of the craziest, I mean, you, you look at your album covers and you see the pictures of, like, people being ripped open or just... Yeah, I mean, uh, 
we, we've had so many different. I mean, something happened the other night. This probably has nothing to do with your question, but it's interesting. Uh, we were playing in Rhode Island, and I do a thing in my show where everyone gets bloody. It's the thing that I took from uh, from England. When you kill your first fox, you get blooded from the fox. So I kind of do that to my audience, kind of a <laughs> baptism thing. And so everyone had blood on their cheeks, you know. Huh. And then the fire alarm came on. The lights came on, and people are yelling fire. And this is Rhode Island. All the nightclub. So I, I'm still singing. I figured, you know, and then all of a sudden I realized, okay, and I heard the word fire, and then we got everyone out, and then the fire truck came rolling in. When they came pulling up, they looked, and everybody was bloody. They, they said, how many people are hurt? <laughs> they called an ambulance, another ambulance, they called an extra ambulance, and all these people were because everybody was just filled with blood. So that was their first thing, and, I, and it was kind of live theater happening before my eyes, and I'm just... I'm out there in the parking lot too, going, "Oh my God!" <laughs> and you know, the, these fire—they're all there. They're, they came ready to go, but when they seen everybody was bloody, it was just one of those things. They just thought it was uh, something they couldn't even control. Like, boy, what's going on here? So it was one of those. Uh, Did you guys tape that for a future? No, or because something? it came so quickly. We didn't even—I didn't even know. I didn't even know that they were having that reaction because you know, I'm—I look at bloody kids every day. You know, and even when we do our signing sessions, everyone's still filled with blood, so it's second nature to me. I wasn't thinking their response. <laughs> their response is, everybody's bloody, my God, what happened? So it was kind of like, a, like I said, it was live, live art happening at that moment. And uh, I don't know, I don't think the cameras were rolling, but everybody was laughing about it later, you know. And it's, uh, especially the club owners are just going, oh my God. <laughs> You've, uh, obviously you guys have, with talking with Martin, you talked about following Blue with time. You know, what other charity work do you guys get involved with or other causes you guys? Um, we did the Make-A-Wish Foundation a few times uh, and we're still involved, uh, you know. Um, we volunteered to, um, to go overseas and play for the troops and they haven't, they haven't uh, requested it yet but we're, we're you know, they, they know we're on the list, whatever, and we're, we're willing to go at a moment's notice. Uh, we, anytime we get asked to do something, we do it. You know, it's just it's not, it's not even a question. So, but those are the two that that I that come to mind. We've done, like I said, make a wish a couple times cool. over the years. Do you have any uh, funny police stories you'd like to share? <laughs> being on the road? Uh, it just happened on the uh, coming up here. Uh, we're going through Indiana and uh, got pulled over. <laughs> And uh, I'm thinking, oh my God, this is going to be a nightmare. And he came, came up and uh, started talking, and and, and he goes, what, and we said, whoever was driving said it was, we were there were a band, Lizzie Borden. He goes, Lizzie Borden loves <laughs> us, so he, he ended up getting on the list, you know, for the show coming up. So he'll be there at the show, and uh, of course, he didn't give us a ticket and let us go on our way. So that's a, that's a cool thing. I mean, I, 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 I see that more and more, and uh, you, know, you just never know who the Lizzie Borden fans are, and especially when they grew up, you know, exactly. and became upstanding citizens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Secretly, they're <laughs> Lizzie Borden fans, you know, heavy metal fans or whatever, so it's kind of, it's a cool thing to, because it is like it is the ultimate disguise, because they don't look like they would be Lizzie Borden oh, exactly. fans. So uh, that's that's one of the things that's always a surprise, and it's a, it's a nice surprise. Though. Very cool. Um, I just have one more question. What off your new latest last album? What's some of your favorite songs to play live off of that? Uh, well, tomorrow never comes is is a is a favorite, and uh, under your skin, that one. You know, I was reluctant to put that in the show for a long time, and Joey uh, just kept bugging me to do it, and I'm like, I don't know if it's gonna play because it's kind of dark and, oh, yeah. you know, we're playing festivals in the sun and, <laughs> and fun. And I'm thinking we're going to play this dark song. How are they going to respond to it? And it just killed every night. Every, just, you know, the, the response was so, was so much better than some of the other songs that were more up-tempo that uh, now we can't take it out of the set. <laughs> it's like it's become a staple of the show. So those two songs and, uh, you know, we've tried. Uh, when we first put out the album, we played like six or seven songs off of it. I always do that when we put out a new record. Yep. I always make sure that, you know, we're not just 
putting out an album and playing one song off of it, you know. We're trying to push the album and hopefully people will like it enough to, to make those the classic songs and not have to live on something I wrote 29 years right. ago or whatever. <laughs> so, you know, that's the whole point, you know. So, but, uh, yeah, Tomorrow Never Comes and Under Your Skin are the, are the main ones that, that we, that usually never leave the set. Rachel, any questions?